Not be more unenthused about this game coming up on Sunday, so thankfully we don't have to talk about the X's and the O's. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Now, the one thing about this weekend, which I think is comforting for me, I know it's not comforting for most of you, is that I can commiserate with the Patriots fans <laughs> over how unimportant this whole exercise is this weekend. Um, just too much. Welcome in. Nice to have you. It's been a long, strange week in Rhode Island, no doubt. Uh, the passing of Buddy Cianci has got a lot of us, certainly me, who broadcasts next to him and his time period for, for years and years now. Uh, everyone's been kind of like a hmm. Between that and the battle on truck tolls and the state house and gosh knows, it's nice to be able to kind of chill a little bit here tonight and actually talk about a subject matter which is really, really important. And it's related to the sports world a little bit. So I, I just wanted to mention that they've got the, uh, the viewing for Buddy and he'll be lying in repose at City Hall uh, tomorrow from noon to 6 and then Sunday from noon to 6. And then the funeral is Monday and we will be talking about uh, what we've seen over the past weekend from that whole experience on the Monday night program. Uh, as you know, on Friday evenings, if you're a regular viewer and if you're not welcome, uh, we kind of uh, do away with our rundown and, and kind of dig into a subject of the day. And, and while I just couldn't, I, I didn't even see, see a market interest in actually discussing who could win the Super Bowl, I will start with an aspect of something looming and hanging over the Super Bowl that gives us an opportunity to do a real good discussion here tonight. Here's the headline that Peyton Manning has had to suffer with. And of course, he's pretty aggravated by it. It's completely fabricated, complete trash, garbage. Uh, there's some more adjectives I'd like to be able to use. Um, but it really makes me sick. And of course, she's talking about performance enhancing drugs, which is a subject matter that my guest, Don Hooden, knows a lot about. Unfortunately, tragically, and now, Oh, constructively. Welcome in. Thank you for joining me. Great to be here. You're not from here, are you? I don't talk like you guys do up here, I can tell you. It's good for ratings when I get somebody <laughs> from down Texas way to come on the broadcast, you know, because, uh, well, it's a break of the action. But uh, I know you've made a special trip for some projects up here in Rhode Island. You've got your own point of view uh, and a life story to talk about. We use Peyton really as a pivot point, not as a, a place of analysis, right? He's denying that he's using performance enhancing, enhancing drugs, and I hope and you hope, I'm guessing, that that's, that's true. That's correct, yeah. Right? Uh, if it's not, all heck's going to break loose, and I don't know what kind of investigations we'll see. And Hopefully we can enjoy the Super Bowl and he can compete in it without having to worry about the, the hangover that that creates. But you have a story about performance enhancing drugs that breaks your heart, your family's heart, and has caused you to be on a life mission. Tell me about it. Our youngest son, Taylor, uh, was a high school baseball player and a pitcher, junior in high school. Coach told him he needed to get bigger to improve his chances of making the varsity team. And nothing wrong with that. All the coaches do that. Sad thing is, coach wasn't trained to show Taylor or the other boys how to get bigger. And unbeknownst to the coach, uh, Taylor, like half of the boys on his baseball team, began injecting themselves with anabolic steroids. And seven months later, Taylor died. And that's a long story in itself. But the long and short of it is, is as parents, we had no idea how dangerous any of these performance enhancing drugs can really be. But more importantly, how many kids are using these drugs? We were shocked, had no idea that as many kids are participating in this activity, a lot of which I believe has been driven by the poor example that many of our professional athletes uh, uh, over, the, over the past years, whether that's Barry Bonds or Lance Armstrong, we could go across all sports and find examples of men and women that have made it to the very top of sport by taking shortcuts and using performance enhancing drugs and these kids look up to their role models and we've now got a couple of million of our children nationally that are uh, participating in this behavior and it, it should shock everybody. I'll take you as far as you want to in terms of the play-by-play -play with your own experience and it, it's, it's, it's your sensibility that rules the day here but did you know? Not until the very end. We had, uh, let me say, two things. One, 
Taylor was exhibiting all of the physical warning signs. He put on about 30 pounds of muscle in 90 days. He had a severe case of acne on his back, bad breath. All of the physical signs were there. That, but hindsight's always 2020. Uh, we had no idea that that. Just think he's pumping pretty hard, right? Taking his supplements, uh, working hard. And every hard. kid gets acne, so, right? You and, know. You know, and he's working out at the gym, but what triggered us was behavior changes. We'd raised, you know, his older brother and his sister, and all of these kids are going to go through mood swings, but Taylor was going through real mood swings, uh, both on the aggressive side, which we call roid rage, we saw it with our own eyes, or on the depressive side, and that sent us to the doctors, who all missed it until a psychiatrist that, you know, we finally said, Taylor, you can't talk about it, but you got to talk about it with somebody. And took the psychiatrist six visits uh, to get him to admit what the problem was, that he'd been using anabolic steroids, and she had him quit cold turkey. And uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. He wound up committing suicide. Oh, God bless him. And, uh, I'm so sorry for your loss. I, 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 and that sounds so cliche and transitional. Okay, let's talk. But I, I, I as a parent, I just, I, what an awful, awful experience it must have been. You took how much time to say, look, I'm going to make this a mission? It's hard for me to believe in hindsight. I gave my first public talk on the subject six weeks after Taylor died. Wow. And then working with our church, realized that this is a mission, that you know, we, we walked into a vacuum, information vacuum, about a problem that didn't just exist in North Texas, but existed nationally. Mm -hmm. And CBS 60 Minutes covered our story, the New York Times did, I had the opportunity to testify before Congress three times. All of that is just to point out that what had happened in our little family in, in, in Dallas, Texas, in the suburbs, was going on all over the country. And so we formed a nonprofit organization, the Taylor Hooten Foundation, named after my youngest son, uh, are sponsored proudly by Major League Baseball, who working with us are helping us to address this problem with the kids. And we've now talked to over a million children across the country, trying to educate them about the dangers of these drugs and, and, and how they can achieve their objectives the right way, with the old-fashioned way, with eating more of mom's green beans and mashed potatoes and, uh, and working hard. Hmm. Rhode Island's partnered up with you. Oh, it's been wonderful. Uh, we do programs all over the country, but you should be proud, as I know you are, that the state of Rhode Island is the first state that has stepped up and are implementing education programs in every middle school, high school, and college in the state. Uh, we're working with the Rhode Island Interscholastic League, who are coordinating and actually implementing the program, and uh, the Rhode Island Foundation is providing the financial resources to make that happen. I, we hope that this is something that will begin spreading to other states, but this is a first, and it's a major step. All right, so uh, that's a good uh, opportunity to pause and invite the executive director of the Rhode Island Interscholastic League to the conversation to talk about what they're doing here in Rhode Island and also to learn some more about what you need to be watching for. Stay with us. Uh, that is uh, the website for the Taylor Hooten Foundation, which um, you will see. And of course, you always, always go to foxprovidence.com, by the way, and, uh, and you'll find at our website all the information from the various guests that we have on when you've got to follow them and, and hear about them. Uh, joining our discussion, uh, along with Don Hooten from the Taylor Hooten Foundation, is the Interscholastic League uh, Executive Director here in Rhode Island, uh, Tom Esnati, no stranger to this broadcast or to Rhode Island. My friend, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Mr. Hooten says that uh, we ought to be proud that Rhode Island's Interscholastic League is hooked in with this mission uh, to inform, to prevent tragedy, the likes of which he, of course. God forbid, uh, had to deal with. What got you hooked into this? Well, it's interesting. Um, the Rhode Island Foundation approached us and said, look, we've got some money that we would like to see used uh, educating young people about the dangers of anabolic steroids, supplements, and so forth. And I said, well, geez, that's a great idea. We, you know, we, we thankful for, we're thankful for the money, but how do we do this? 
I mean, you just don't wake up one morning and say, I'm going to go out to schools and I'm going to talk about this. Uh, but I recall uh, a few years before that, uh, I heard about the Taylor Hooten Foundation. And Don had contracted or had discussed this with a lot of uh, states. So we felt that this was the opportunity to bring them in to be able to share what they've gone through and share all of the statistics and the data that they have with our families and with our kids in Rhode Island. So that's how it happened. So the foundation said, geez, that's a great idea. We brought in Taylor Hooten, uh, we brought in Don Hooten, and uh, Operation Clean Competition began in Rhode Island. You're an educator. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, in your former life. Yes, right? that's right, yeah. I mean, you love the kids. Absolutely. This is, this is tough stuff. It really is. But i got to tell you something, and Don and I were talking about this before. When they've gone out to schools and they've talked to kids and they've talked to coaches, they've talked to administrators, the biggest impact they have is on mothers. Because the son will come home or the daughter will come home and say, can you go out and get me this? I need this because I need to get stronger. And the parents saying, well, what is that? I mean, why, why do you want that? You know, is it good? Is it not good? Uh, this gave parents, especially moms, the information they needed to, to go to the store and say, okay, no, you can't have this, you, you can't have this. I, can tell you, I don't know. <laughs> I walk in. I'm still a jock. I'm still trying to get in shape. It's not working very well, but, you know, I mean, I, I, it's so bad that I just took a sip of water while Tom was talking, and I spilled on myself. It's Friday night. Who cares, right? Uh, I'll be heading to the bar after this one, I can promise you. But anyway, I mean, I look at all that stuff and think, hmm, I wonder if I could. Huh, blah, blah, blah. A protein shake is something that I'm told is okay for me to take and blah, blah, blah. But past that, it's, it's those shells are kind of an unknown world, aren't they? Those shelves are the wild, wild west. Let me share with you a couple of numbers that you and your, and your viewers may have a hard time believing. There are at least 20 to 25 percent of those protein shakes, creatine, and other bodybuilding products that are there on the shelves that are spiked with things like anabolic steroids. That's the reason many of these products are so popular. Is it described? Of course it's not described because it's illegal to be putting this stuff in the supplements. But supplements, and it's a long involved story that we don't have time to get into here, are completely unregulated, totally unregulated. There is nobody verifying that what's on the label of the container is what's in the container. You can't take that container. Are you, are you, are you saying that the average whey protein uh, uh, bottle might have that stuff in it? The 25 percent of the products on the shelves are spiked, of, of these type products, are spiked with things like anabolic steroids, real ones too. Which then can do what to you? I mean, I mean we've seen the tragic ending, but, but immediately, would you recognize? Now, you're not a doctor. Uh, did, no, you, did you stay to Hollywood Express last night? You know, <laughs> show? Um, but but you, you know enough about oh, the sure. whole thing. So make a general representation. General about. representation, where, where, where these drugs are most dangerous to the, to the person using them is the cardiovascular system. Mm. Uh, way I describe it to the kids, just a real tough thought question. If you take a muscle building substance and it circulates through your body, is there any reason to believe that the only muscles that are getting bigger are the ones you can see on the outside? The answer is of course not. The most important muscle in your body is your heart. Last time I checked, an enlarged heart is one of the very definitions of heart disease. It, col good cholesterol goes down, bad cholesterol goes up, uh, risks of high, and then we could go through the kidneys and the liver and other organs, but it's doing serious damage. That's the reason they're illegal. It's a felony to get caught possessing real anabolic steroids, but this stuff is being marketed out through the supplement industry every single day, and we're working hard to change that, and there are some resources that parents can go to, to to make sure their supplements are safe but but in general if you don't check it's buyer beware and so what are you saying in the schools what are you, what are you, what are you saying uh, across the board well obviously we're we're trying to educate kids to not use this okay and we're obviously coaches on encouraging kids to, to use this inf these these drugs and these supplements the other thing that's really interesting though is the appearance performance enhancing oh. drugs especially with females, to improve appearance. And when I, when I spoke to Don and we heard their presentation, uh, a lot of girls are turning toward that because it improves their appearance. Meaning 
facially curvature? What what are we talking about here? Well, the, the, all of the kids now want to look like the athletes do, whether they're whether they're male or female. And if if we just stick with the males, if if the males look good and uh, got that beefed up look, six pack abs, you know, strong upper body, they're as a general rule, capturing the attention of the females. Well, the other guys in school may not be competing in athletes, but they want to compete on the social field, and we find that at least half, if not more, of the users of uh, spike dietary supplements, real anabolic steroids, HGH, are being driven to do so for appearance reasons, body dysmorphia. I mean, we're all familiar uh, with, with anorexia and bulimia with the girls, an obsession to get smaller. Right. Well, there's even a name for it with the guys. It's called bigorexia, an obsessive desire to get that muscled, chiseled look. And it's being done for looks. Most of these guys don't even compete in that. But the athletics. girls are doing it too? Yeah, and, and the girls, I mean, uh, girls today want to look fit. They want, I mean, some of them are very thin, but they want to develop. They want to develop faster. So these drugs are helping them to do that. That's horrifying. You know, and, and that's why when, par I, the, when parents go to these uh, performances and, and these educational sessions, they learn so much, just like you are right now, and they walk away saying, my God, this is such a dangerous world we're living in. And it is. It really is. And the days when I was a kid, smoking was bad. It would stunt your growth, for example. But now there's so many other things out there that, that affect your body. And the key is, we live, kids live for today. They don't live for tomorrow or 10 years from now. They live for today. How can I improve my performance? How can I improve, improve my appearance today without any regard for what's going to happen tomorrow? And of course, there's winning. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. That's a good point. That's the next session of today. It's a fascinating conversation uh, that Don Hooten brings uh, to us from North Texas, uh, the Taylor Hooten Foundation, uh, a unique relationship with the state of Rhode Island's Interscholastic League, trying to make the point that uh, all of this performance-enhancing drug dietary supplement activity is just so doggone dangerous. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, Don learned the ultimate heart way, and there's no way to be cliche about that. He lost his son. Uh, to this this awful process, and and then uh, I, I guess you can determine it to be a disease. A disease that by the time I, I guess the definitions aren't important. What happened is what's important here. Um, so we talk about this need to look good, compete well. You know, winning. Winning is what America is about. Competition, sport, sport in America is exploding. It it it. it, it it is, it's the number one revenue source in broadcast. It's, it's well, other forms of entertainment are diminishing. Sports is exploding. There are opportunities for girls now in college. There's Title IX money out there. There are parents that are really, really focused on that. Uh, when yes. does it all end? Well, well. It ends. It ends with a loss of life when you when you mess around with it, doesn't it? It, it? it ends there. But you have a reflection on this, this this need to win, which we should never truly criticize, instinctively criticize. It's the American way type of thing. But uh, yeah, but Don, you know, Don has suffered the ultimate sacrifice here. Right. But how many coaches or parents or friends have said to their buddies or their athletes or their sons or daughter, you know? To make that team next year, or to really win, you've got to you've got to really improve. You've got to build up. You've got to get stronger. You've got to get faster. You've got to you've got to be better. And what message is that sending? I mean, the old days we developed naturally. I mean, you know, I played high school sports and a little bit in college and in different schedules. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there 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 are kids that in junior and senior in high school really haven't grown into themselves yet. That's and you, you meet them when they're sophomores in college and say, where did that come from? And it was natural, right? Natural testosterone, natural pu you know, development through puberty. And, uh, you know, we you know, got coaches and leaders talking to these kids like they talked to Taylor, tell, telling me he needed to get bigger. And it's like I had a doctor tell me one time, is, is our athletic leadership, are they trained to know when a kid could get bigger? It's quite possible that for some of these kids, 
they're as big as they can be. They're eating properly, they're working out, they're, they're, they're on their proper diet, and they're growing at the proper rate. And, and, and like Tom says, you know, with this push to get bigger and faster and stronger, sometimes their only alternative is to turn to products that they think are safe, like dietary supplements, which as we've learned, many of them aren't, or in the worst case, actually going in and purchasing what otherwise we'd call drugs, real anabolic steroids or human growth hormone, and they buy them in these vials. And in Taylor's case, as, and it's the case with so many kids, actually in the bathroom taking turns injecting themselves. I mean, this is really... Not considering themselves to be partiers, Right. Oh no! Doing uh, it to uh, get better. Right, right, right. This is this is not this is not a social activity. This is calisthenic times. This has got to be done in order to. Yeah, it's 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 not. But then I think the other thing too. And again, I hope we don't portray that all coaches are doing this because that's not true. Our coaches today are much better informed, much better educated, much better trained yes. to keep kids away from those things and going in the right direction. So, you know, with, with the, the courses that they take on the NFHS network, uh, in terms of uh, proper training, proper nutrition, uh, proper dieting, and so forth, we're training our coaches to be better coaches well, in that and, sense. And so I should true. say uh, that network is uh, apparent on the Interscholastic website, correct? correct. correct. So if you go to riil.org, and we've got, we've put that up there somewhere, uh, these video training sessions are on the website, Absolutely. Um, and you're supplementing that with on-site discussions right. year-round, all that kind of a thing. So the information, if you're wondering you know, what the nuts and bolts of what to look for, what you shouldn't be buying, all those kind of things, they're all part of what the information on the website offers, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Uh, in, in summary, uh, on this conversation, are we at a tipping point? Where are we on the trajectory of the problem? Are we coming down from it? Are we st is it growing? Where are we? The numbers for our youth use of performance enhancing drugs are higher than they've ever been. Seven Even with all the attention with the major leaguers and everybody else getting in trouble? They're getting in trouble, but they're still making millions of dollars. I mean, they're still uh, It's that debate. Division I scholarship. It really is at that level. It, 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 college is really expensive. Absolutely. And it's... It's become, I, I hate to see these freshmen in high school, you know, applying themselves to their sport as if they've got a job to do to be able to right. get their scholarship in right. college. So it, all of that pressure adds to this. Whole that thing, never, right? you know, every parent thinks their, their kid is the next major league baseball player or star in the NBA or the NFL and are pushing and encouraging these kids to uh, extraordinary lengths. Well, the idea that parents sometimes live vicariously through their kids is a whole other conversation, don't you think? Yes, it is. Right, it's so an interesting conversation. It is, uh, and one which we should have on a more regular basis. Uh, we'll make sure people go to the website, riil.org. -I 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 Correct. And, uh, and we have a link right to the Taylor Hooten web website as well. Um, again, the uh, Condolences on your loss, but congratulations on your work. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Final word when we come back, stay with us. Good job. Thank you. I didn't mean to infer. I do hope parents of athletes, whether they're six year olds in your mind, an athlete, or 16 or older, I hope that you have a conversation with your kids about this because uh, you, don't, you don't want to live. Don's tragic story, and you don't want to be the one that says, I didn't know. You should know. Pay attention. Uh, Carolina will have this thing over before the first half. So that's my prediction. I'll answer to it next week. You have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Good night.